Hi folks, welcome to Herbs, Spices, and Medicinal Plants. I come from a family of teachers, so I'm grateful to be your guide in this comprehensive course on many aspects of herbalism and medicinal plants. I get really excited about plants and our relationship with them, and it's been a long one. Since the ancestors of the first green plants, cyanobacteria have been recently documented to exist on planet Earth for at least 3.5 billion years, based on deep cores taken near Australia. And then I'll mention more about that later. As a teacher with many years of leading herb walks in forests, meadows, cities, fields, seashore, and mountains, most of my interactions with students and patients in my clinic have been live and in person. Yet now I see so many positives for online learning. I'm so excited to meet you online and interact with you where you live, where otherwise I wouldn't have had the chance to meet you. Besides my love of, and well I admit it, fixation with plants and the natural world my entire life, the other reason I have stayed involved with herbal medicine and healing so long is community. I have always found that plant people and herbalists are really special in the sense that they care about their health and well-being and the health of the planet we live on. Herbalists and herbies, people that, that don't call themselves herbalists yet, but feel like they have a really strong affinity towards medicinal plants and healing and the natural world, often call themselves herbies in classes. By the way, Sometimes you hear the word herbologist. An herbologist is someone who studies herbs and herbal medicine where an herbalist puts the knowledge into practice, getting to know the plants where they live, growing them in their garden or window box, harvesting them, making medicines, and learning about their nature, chemistry, and pharmacology, and activity and uses. Green plant lineages are much older than our ancestors, the fish. Fish and other animals, such as mammals, didn't arise before somewhere between 650 and 550 million years ago. Since that time, we have depended on green plants for our oxygen, construction material to build shelters and food, and, of course, medicine. One big question this course will ask, and hopefully get you thinking about, is what is the place of gentle herbal medicines in modern health care? In the medical clinic, perhaps used side by side with more powerful drugs having significant side effects. What about chamomile or peppermint tea for a stomach ache? Or valerian, not related to Valium, of course, or kava for insomnia or anxiety? Are they strong enough for today? Do they have any clinical trials to back up the long history of use over sometimes what might be 2,000 years or more by the Egyptian? Assyrians, Greeks, and Romans, and then into Southern Europe and into more mainland Europe, Italy, the UK. And then, and this was all going on about 1200 CE, and it's good to remember Chinese medicine and Ayurveda, which is East Indian system of medicine, going back probably two or 3,000 years in Asia. So herbal medicine has been around for a long time. People at least 2,500 years ago are on record to have used garlic, turmeric, ginger, some of the major spices and medicinal herbs a long, long time ago. But actually, even more powerful herbs are recommended by herbalists and prescribed by naturopaths, acupuncturists, chiropractors. Powerful medicines that are highly concentrated, such as St. John's wort, ginkgo, senna, turmeric, uh, and there are others that are even more potent, which herbalists often don't use, like belladonna. Yellow jasmine is another example of a very, very potent herb that has high toxic potential. Those aren't often used, uh, but 
certainly concentrated herbal medicines, highly concentrated, where one could argue that they're even more like a, an herbal pharmaceutical, like a phytopharmaceutical, than a simple herb. In this class, we will discuss all these topics and many more. I encourage you to ask questions, enjoy the readings I will assign, watch videos, listen to my talks on each topic, even in your car, and make herbal preparations in the kitchens like salves, tinctures, oils, and various teas and dried teas. I will also recommend botanizing from time to time in order to make personal connections with the herbs and medicinal foods, which you can peruse in the produce department of almost any big supermarket. Uh, garlic, thyme, ginger, turmeric, parsley, oregano, sage, all of these can be found in the produce department of most supermarkets today. And in fact, I have a story about that, which I always like to tell, and that is one time I was speaking down at the biggest Whole Foods in the country down in Austin, Texas. In fact, it was the first, but it was remodeled and enlarged. I had to give a talk the next morning, and I came in, and, and we were having dinner, and then I found that I was suddenly getting a terrible sore throat and sniffles and cough, and I thought, oh my gosh, I've got to speak tomorrow, and starting to feel pretty bad. And so then I thought, well, I'm in Whole Foods. There should be some good herbal medicines. Somehow I went off without any. And so I started walking down the aisles. And boy, are they tall aisles there in the supplement department. So many supplements, so many different brands and types. And I thought, well, what the heck? What can, which one is going to be the best? And I've been in the supplement industry for a long time. I hate to say how long, but it's, and it, which has been fun. And I know supplements well, but it's still pretty confusing. So then I kept walking, and suddenly I came to a break in the aisle, and I looked down over to the right and saw the produce department. So I said, hmm, I wonder what's down there. And so I walked over and started looking around, and sure enough, they had bundles of thyme and oregano, and of course there was garlic and onions and ginger. So I thought, well, you know, here's the medicine right here. Here's the fresh medicine right from the field, from, you might say, farm to tablet, and not farm to tablet, farm to the whole herb. And so I picked up some garlic and ginger and thyme and went back to my hotel room and brewed it up in the coffee maker in the hotel room. That was about all they had, simmered it, combined some thyme, put it in a little bit later and boiled the ginger and kind of tasted like coffee. But nevertheless, I drank it down and drank two or three cups of it, and the next morning I was fine. I was feeling great and able to speak, and my throat, sore throat was gone. And So I really think that great to consider depending on fresh herbs or freshly dried herbs and not quite so much on capsules or tablets. And that's one focus of this class is learning how to make your own products from fresh or freshly dried herbs. Again, welcome to the class. And don't forget that I will be available to answer questions, chat online, and also post office hours or by arrangement for those who want to ask questions live. Hope to see you soon.